This week on eTalk, Matt and Kit show us their tips for hair care, we dissect the Kardashian-Jenner family tree, and Tommy and Azura are here to talk about their short film. All that and more coming up. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to eTalk, where we talk everything from LA to Elon. I'm Courtney, here with Megan, Matt, and our special guest host, Sierra. Let's jump in right into the hot gossip of the week. So, what do you guys have? So, this weekend was pretty crazy on SNL. I don't know if you guys saw it, but Gal Gadot was guest host, and I love Gal Gadot, loved her in Wonder Woman, so iconic. She, they were doing a skit on the mascara, so kind of like a play off of Wonder Woman, all that craze and hysteria about it. Um, and actually, in that skit, in that segment, Kate McKinnon, we all know her, love her, and Gal Gadot made out for a solid 13 seconds on live television. Oh my god. It was like a precise 13 seconds. Like a precise, I got my time, I got my timer and I timed it. But, like, it went viral, like, YouTube blew up, fans were loving it. It was like, I watched it yesterday for the second time, and it was like number two on trending on YouTube. Um, and I really like loved it because it kind of showed how forward thinking SNL is. It always has been, you know, a kind of liberal, you know, mindset uh, TV show. But like especially now, like it was great to see, you know, that kind of more, you know, sexuality is present on SNL, and it was like really cool to see, really funny to see. It was funny, yeah. Did you see Aidy Bryant's reaction in it too? Yes, that was so, so funny. So <laughs> funny. They all acted really well together. I'm excited yeah. to see kind of like that's what you know SNL is kind of going for the for the second episode this season. I'm excited mm -hmm. to see what they're gonna do, in you know, future. in the future episodes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I feel like they're really good at pushing the boundaries in the right way, and I feel like if anyone's gonna do that, it's gonna be Kate McKinnon. Exactly, yeah. or just SNL in general. I think yeah. that yeah. a lot of people look to them for that funny stuff to kind of make things lighthearted in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited really. to see what they have in store for yeah. us this season. Yeah. So speaking of kissing, okay. um, that kind of talk genre, about? <laughs> let's talk about new relationships. Ooh. Did you guys hear about Justin Bieber and Paola Pollitt? Oh, what no. Who is she? So she was an actress. I think she was in Ballers. Um, yeah, the HBO show. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. But apparently they're dating. It's mm. on the low key. Nothing's been mm. confirmed yet. But they went to church together twice now. So cute. Um, and Justin Bieber said that he wanted her to meet his pastor. Mm. So, so skip the parents. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> like, but I guess he's on like the right path now. You yeah. Know, doing much better. Because like after the Purpose album, I love the album by the way. And like he's yeah. trying to change his life, I guess. I it's wonder, yeah, I wonder if this is the thing where like he's pushing it or like she's pushing mm -hmm. it. I don't know. I think it's good for him. I think he always has been influenced by God a lot and he like mm -hmm. talks about his faith and his music a lot, which is cool. But his actions have never really represented that. I mean, exactly. I was That's say, why I would have <laughs> never pictured Justin Bieber sitting in a pew. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, there's I, pictures of it. <laughs> yeah, like I, because I knew, I know on Purpose Story he had that kind of like mental breakdown. He, I know, did he cancel shows? Didn't he? I think. I don't know. Or he, he had I to. I think so. He was going through yeah. some problems, and yeah. then he kind of disappeared for a little bit, and then now he's at a church pew, and I'm mm. kind of thinking, oh, like what's going to mm -hmm. happen there? He always like kind of, you know darts in and out of the media and like you never yeah. know what's going on behind all of that so it's kind yeah. of interesting yeah. what he does. And well, I feel like this was like a very low-key thing and I feel like a lot of his bigger like scandals are very like pushed in the media and mm -hmm. I feel like he is sort of behind that or he'll make some huge announcement like Instagram about I'm taking a break or something mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and I don't know I kind of like this was more like kind of like a low-key thing you know. Yeah, yeah I think that's why it hasn't been confirmed yet yeah. you know because his past relationships really blew up in a negative light sometimes so. But yeah. we'll see if it lasts. Yeah. You know? yeah. Speaking of things blowing up, I think we all remember when Miley and Liam took that oh little my God. break. Break, break oh. Oh. I like, I wanted them to get together so get back together so bad, but I just mm -hmm. like didn't expect it to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. So she just went on the Howard Stern show and she did about like a two hour interview, like told a lot about like Hannah Montana and her dad and like wanting to get back to her national roots. And of course she touched back on Liam a little bit because he had to ask about yeah. that. Mm -hmm. right. And actually, it was like a funny story. So like the first album she recorded as herself, the Meet Miley Cyrus album, she recorded that at the house she lives in now that Liam lives in. What? So like she had no idea she'd end up living there. And when they broke up, Liam needed a break. So he moved to Malibu and the guy who sold him the house hid all these plaques she had from her album, like in the basement what? or something. And then he moves in and finds them and he's like, 
what the what heck, the heck? She's, she's everywhere like, she, oh my I can't God. Get and then they it. end up getting back together and now she lives in that house and that's a song that that's where like the song Malibu, Malibu came yeah. from yeah oh. which I thought was so funny because I never heard that story before that's hmm. crazy. That's yeah, so what a coincidence. I love that album too. I like, no, I think Bangers was the best. I don't know. I, I have her Bangers it. tour was. Bangers, <laughs> like the album yeah. though. <laughs> it was so good. Well, for Celebrity Oh No No this week, so everyone knows that Demi Lovato um, released a new album, and at one of her album release gigs that she was doing, she dropped the F-bomb because she was singing Stone Cold and she couldn't hit the notes. Mm. And then she shades other people, other artists who lip sing. So do you think we should still like look down on people who are lip singing? What do you feel about her using the F-bomb? Like what do you guys I thoughts? think it was very yeah. notable and human of her. Like I think we always put artists to like this next level of expectations that we set for them. Mm -hmm. And I think she kind of, you know, in a very simple way, she addressed that she's human. Sometimes they even can't sing and people mm -hmm. need to be, you know, open minded <laughs> yeah. about the fact that people have off days and mm -hmm. Stone Cold, like that note that she was trying to hit, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you have to be having a good day to get that. Right. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. You can't have anything wrong with your throat or your pipes or whatever that yeah. to do with that. So I, I really commended her for it. Mm. Yeah. That's really interesting because that was something that got brought up in the Miley Howard Stern interview because mm. she is like so hard on like, I never lip sync, but she talked a lot about how like, other people do it, and maybe you wouldn't call them a singer, but it's like still entertainment. Like they're yeah. entertainers, and okay. as long as you have that like dance or like big like pyrotechnic act or something like within the concert, then like yeah, you know you do you. Put on a show. And yeah, because talent is, but you have to put in the work. Mm -hmm. to like do it and if they can sing like we all know Demi can sing so right. mm -hmm. she can lip sing I feel like she can get a pass and other artists too yeah mm -hmm. coming up our fashion experts Matt and Kit show us how to care for our hair don't go anywhere adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. How could you not love him? Welcome to eTalk Style Corner. I'm Kit and this is Matt and we're eTalk's resident fashion experts. And today we're showing you how to care for your hair. So the product that I brought today is one of my absolute favorites ever. Okay. It is a raw shea butter deep treatment mask for your hair. And so what, is that, what exactly does that do? Okay, so that's what I thought too. So I used to have really like dry and kind of damaged hair because mm -hmm. I used a lot of tools on it. I was yeah. using like straighteners and blow dryers. So mm -hmm. I got this mask and it says for healing, growth, and strengthening. Mm -hmm. And basically what it has in it is sea kelp and shea butter. And what you do is you... You wet your hair in the shower, mm -hmm. you put this on for five minutes, and it's not, it's not even that long, okay. and then you wash it out. And if you want an even deeper treatment, that you put it on for 30 minutes, apply heat, like in a blow dryer, mm -hmm. and it gets like an even, like, even better, even more deep treatment mask. So and basically... So what, for what like hair types is this for? It's actually for every hair type. Okay, I would men and women? Yeah. Okay. I would not recommend it to people with super oily hair, because okay. it's basically like getting in and hydrating the mm -hmm. hair. So if you have issues with super oily hair, it's probably not for you. But if you have dry or damaged hair, it, at least it really helped me, and I know mm -hmm. a lot of people love it. So well, speaking of oily hair, if you do have oily hair, my tip is to actually not wash your hair every single day. So I'm actually getting, I get into the habit of washing my hair every day just because I'm yeah, a clean freak, too. and I me don't too. like going to bed with like dirty hair. But actually, you're supposed to like wash your hair, I think, once or twice a week. And if you wow. don't want to, you're supposed to leave in, you know, some dry shampoo. Okay. Which is kind of weird for men. Like I never would have thought men would 
use dry, dry shampoo, shampoo. But actually, if you have a greasy scalp and you have oily hair, dry shampoo is actually proven to kind of reduce that oiliness and that greasiness. Okay, so washing twice or three times a week and then using dry shampoo? Mm -hmm, yeah. Oh my gosh. Or um, also hot water. Hot water actually produces, makes your glands produce more oil and grease. So taking colder showers like isn't actually you know bad for you and it's proven to actually also help reduce that oiliness and greasiness as well. Cold showers are the worst though. I know, but it's worth it. But that's all the time we have for now, but tune in next week some, for some more fashion expertise. Next up is the Mosley Minute. Stay tuned. Hey guys, it's Taylor. And I'm Faith. And this week we're filling in for Rachel and Madison. We're here in the Mosley Center today and we're gonna ask people what gets them pumped for fall. So Taylor, what gets you pumped for fall? I would have to say baking. I love baking anything pumpkin related, whether it's cookies, Girl. muffins, cakes, no matter what it is. You can bake me any pumpkin related I will. thing. <laughs> hey guys, I'm here with Derek and Steven. What are you guys pumped about for fall this year? Um, I'm excited for Halloween. Yeah, you gotta love the Halloween parties and uh, trick-or-treating, dressing up. I can't wait for that too. All right, I'm here with Lauren. So Lauren, what gets you pumped for fall? Probably the fashion. I love jeans, so jeans and high boots, definitely. Hey guys, I'm here with Duncan. Duncan, what's your favorite thing about fall? Duncan Donuts. What's your favorite donut? Boston cream. I like glazed. Those are some really great responses. Yeah. Faith, what are you most excited about for fall this year? So I love fall, but this year I'm definitely excited for the return of Stranger Things. <gasps> Me too, I can't wait for that. Counting down. I'm so excited. Yeah. Okay, thanks for tuning in this week, guys. Back Bye. to the studio. Welcome back to the studio. Today I'm here with Kent and Taylor to see if we can actually keep up with our Kardashians. Okay guys, the first thing we need to talk about is that Rob actually was engaged to his sister's boyfriend's ex-fiance. Like, Kit, can you explain this? I'm I so confused. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna completely unpack the Kardashian family tree for everyone. So first off, we know that Robert Kardashian married Kris Jenner. They actually ended up getting a divorce. Before they did, they had Chloe, Courtney, Kim, and Rob. So like the three big sisters. They actually ended up getting a divorce and Kris Jenner then married Bruce Jenner who now transitioned to become Caitlyn and they had their two kids, Kylie and Kendall. So easy part, easy that, part, that that's the easy part guys. <laughs> so Khloe Kardashian used to be married to Lamar Odom but recently married Kristen Thompson and there's pregnancy rumors there. And actually it might be confirmed, I believe it is. I think that's confirmed. Kourtney yeah. Kardashian used to be married to Scott Disick, however they got divorced and she's rumored to be now dating a model. They have three children, Mason, Penelope and Rain. Now here's where it gets really complicated. Kim Kardashian, as everybody knows, is married to Kanye West and they have two beautiful children, North and Saint. But Kanye West used to date Amber Rose. Wait, wait, what? Who is best friends with Black China, who used to date Tyga, who used to date Kylie Jenner. Oh my God. Kylie Jenner <laughs> is now pregnant with a mystery baby that could possibly be Tyga's or could possibly be new boyfriend Travis Scott's. So the backside of this is that Rob Kardashian also used to date Black China, and they had a baby named Dream, but they broke up this summer and it was really super complicated. And then we have Kendall over here, just being her model. She's kind of doing her own thing. So it's, it's kind of a lot to unpack. So wait, let's see. So Rob Kardashian broke up with Black China, and Black China used to date Tyga. And now Tyga's dating Kylie. Or yeah. he used to date Kylie. So over the summer, there was huge drama with Rob Kardashian and Black China over Instagram and Twitter. So, and they have a baby named Dream. <laughs> So, but they're not together anymore. But Black China and Tyga, who used to date Kylie, they also have a baby named King Cairo. Wow. So it's pretty, on much. this side of the family tree, it gets pretty intertwined. Between Black China and Tyga, they really, they really kind of make it messy. And now we're adding more babies to the mix. Like, I feel like Kardashian genealogy yeah. on its own should just be like a <laughs> career, like a field of study. So there are, I think there are, yeah, there are three possible babies right now. Obviously, Kim Kardashian West is having a baby with a surrogate. We already know that. Um, Khloe Kardashian is rumored to be pregnant, and Kylie Jenner is also rumored to be pregnant. That's well, been crazy news. I've heard a rumor wow. that she might be just the surrogate. So that's like a whole thing. I believe that. I think that could be true. Kim surrogate? I don't know. I think that could be true. And that's another link there. <laughs> but it's pretty nuts, so. Yeah. That's crazy. Anyway, next up, we check in with our social media corner. Stay tuned. Hey, look, it's those guys. Are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go ahead and step out of the vehicle for me. 
See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason, because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels, because love has no labels. Talkers, welcome to Social Media Corner, where we're going to be looking at a mysterious Kylie Jenner Snapchat. So, so <laughs> Kylie posted this today on Snapchat, and it's her Kylie Shop phone cases, but it's only pink and blue, and she says which one I'm thinking blue. So some people think it might be a gender reveal, and this means that she's having a boy. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the dot, dot, dot here is very telling. Mm -hmm. Like, she's hinting at something. Yeah. And I read all these theories that, you know, this is leading up to a big reveal maybe on Instagram or something mm -hmm. along so those lines. So similar like Beyonce and Kim always yeah. do. Yeah. I've seen a lot of the, the internet. Yeah, like a source says she's trying to break the internet, so we'll <laughs> see if that happens. She will definitely do it because everyone's just like, waiting for it to come mm. out and for her to at least speak on it and she's been posting some stuff on snapchat yeah. so this is really interesting because yeah. first when she, like the sources broke that she was pregnant they said a girl but now this might mean she's having a boy it's confusing yeah and i feel like i feel like they wouldn't have a child just for the publicity of it, but it's mm -hmm. totally the Kardashian move to sort of turn yeah, it into more publicity. It, to make like maybe it. a whole entire other TV show. Like yeah. who knows? Wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I can't wait though. And then Chloe might be pregnant. It's just yeah. so much going on in that one household. Hey e talkers, I'm Sadi, e talks fitness expert here with uh, Juan today to talk about green tea. We're talking about which teas are healthy and enhance your fitness plan. So today in particular, like I said, we're talking about green tea and the many benefits that it has. Um, so one of the biggest thing is can cancer fighting antioxidants that has been proven that it has that benefit. Uh, and then caffeine is a great, great caffeine source, yeah. which we need a lot I in school. Definitely. And I don't know if you can relate to the detox part of Oh yeah, tea. definitely. Every weekend I always drink tea because I really want to detox because I just really been eating some bad food. So I just want to like get it out of my system. So that's mm -hmm. a great way. And I have a lot of friends who that have tea. So I can just ask them like, hey, can I get some tea? Do you whenever, because I know not everyone likes green tea. Uh, and so since we're talking just teas overall, do you have any other things that you use or something oh, else? Yeah, definitely. My mom grows some tea. It's called spearmint tea. Um, oh. And it's so good. My hallway always asks me, it's like, Juan, when are you going to make some tea? It's like, oh yeah, this weekend, definitely. So okay. we use green tea to detox after messy meals, which we usually have on the weekend because we like to go out and, mm -hmm. you know, have a nice meal with some friends or parents. It was parents weekend, oh, so yeah. we had some nice meals. Um, so then you can, I've replaced also green tea with cinnamon tea Ooh. or ginger tea. Ginger tea is amazing I for you. I haven't had to try it. You should try it. Okay then. Try it, definitely. Um, so yeah, overall great benefits and also just drinking a lot of hot water. Oh hot yeah. Hot water. Yes, that's the trick. Uh, that's all the time we have for this week. Next up, we see what's cooking in the Eat Talk kitchen. Hey Eat Talkers, welcome back to Eat Talk. Fall is in the air, and today we're going to be making a super yummy maple pecan apple crisp. We put a healthy little spin on it, it's going to be delicious. Let's get started.
so there you have it guys. We have our maple pecan apple crisp. It's nice and warm and golden brown as you can see. I'm gonna test this out. Mm. Oh my god, so good guys. This is the perfect fall dish when you're sick of all the pumpkin that you see everywhere. It was so quick to make. You guys should try this out. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your closet. Still no jobs? Just more stuff? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? I can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed. And they're the stuff inside your stuff. Our job is to unlock those jobs. And it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover Today, Tommy Mazura, the creators of the short film, Caller Number 20, are here to talk to us about their experience filming this short. So, Tommy, I know you wrote the short, so what influenced you when you were writing it and what came to mind when you were coming up with the script? Yeah, so the assignment was one character, so one actress and one location. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of wanted to find something um, that could be kind of isolated and I somehow found a teenage girl trying to <laughs> enter this radio contest um, and was kind of able to cheat the system by having her talk to the radio uh, mm. call using the phones. Um, and then Azur and I just love period pieces, specifically the 90s, so <laughs> I decided to put it in the 90s as well. Mm. Yeah, so I was like watching the short and it has like a 90s kind of feel to it. So what was your influence when you were like trying to design the, mm -hmm. f the short. Well, Tommy and I have worked together several times on projects, and like you said, we love period pieces so much. Um, and the inspiration, I mean, when I read the script and I knew that it was gonna be taking place in the 90s, mm -hmm. and I kind of related to this girl because as a very avid One Direction <laughs> fan in high school uh, and today, I <laughs> today. like exactly knew what this girl, what was going through this girl's mind. Mm -hmm. And kind of from that, I took inspiration from what an obsessed teenage girl's bedroom would look like, you know, posters everywhere. And um, I also took inspiration from older 90s movies, um, you know, various, you know, just looking up images of like what kinds of things were popular in the 90s. And that's where we got the blow up alien from and like the composition notebook and mm -hmm. the fuzzy pink pen, you know, um, Clueless that came out in the 90s. You know, she has that very infamous scene where she's playing with a fuzzy pink pen. So we kind of just hid those things around the room and it's really important to have that because it really brings a short film to life and just Definitely. adds a new layer to what you're seeing. So how long did it take for you guys to film this short? It was only a day shoot. Um, wow. it, so it was the two of us and then our cinematographer Gabe, uh, Gabe Salvador. Hmm. And then we had one PA, a production assistant who was Tyler Litwin, and then our actress. So wow. yeah, it was super easy, really quick. Yeah. And again, it's just one location. So, so where did where did you shoot the uh, film? Yeah, we shot it at our friend Cora's house, which is just down the street. She lives off campus, so. So what are your hopes for the film now that it's released? Oh. Good one. <laughs> yeah. um, so we already released it on Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, just to kind of show people what we did. Uh, I don't think we're going to really try and submit it anywhere. We actually might be doing an alternate ending. Mm -hmm. So we kind of came up with what we think is a better ending, so we might go back and do some pickups. So maybe for an eTalk exclusive, what yeah. would that alternative ending be? Yeah. <laughs> a little sneak, you know, you know yeah. how to tell us everything. So instead of her getting excited and running out of the room, leaving the phone behind, 
she gets so excited, turns to call to her mom, like yell out to her mom, and the cord gets disconnected. <gasps> and then she can't get back. Yeah. No, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's still a twist. Yeah. It's still that element of surprise because something just has to up the stakes at the end, but you know. You it's still, a little more visual. Yeah. Hmm. So thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Now we give you an exclusive look at Tommy and Azura's short, caller number 20. That was One Night Stand continuing our trip's power hour. And remember, when you hear the seal, start dialing because the lucky caller number 20 will get two VIP passes to trip's next show where they will get bomb seats, a dope sign poster, and a meet and greet with the band. Okay, super fans, start dialing. Our lines are officially open. You are caller number two. You are caller number 11. Stop. We have our caller number 20. Who am I talking to? Hi, I'm Stacy, the trips' biggest fan. Well, Stacy, let's see about that. What is Brett's favorite food? OMG, that's so easy! No, oh, Brett, of course I know what your favorite food is. We would have it at our wedding right after your best man and brother Dylan made his speech. Is it like, like a pepperoni pizza? Bummer, Stacy, but that is not correct. The next caller to get through will get a crack at the same question. <laughs> Hello? Brett's favorite food is a veggie burger with sun-dried tomatoes, smoked cheddar, and caramelized onions from Betty's Burger Barn Beachfront Burgers and Breakfast in Venice Beach. Damn, girl. We would have just accepted cheeseburger, but I mean, hey, congrats. That is correct. You're going to see trips this weekend. Hello? We still need your name and information. Are you there? Psych, looks like that caller couldn't stay in the line. After the next song, I'll be back with a new question and a new caller. Stay fresh. That's all the time we have for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time, this is eTalk.